on today's topic, my real life Karen. Um, I am going to be joined by one of my favorite people, and we are not going to hold back, y'all. We are going to dive deep into when DEI meets Karen in real life. So for you who have not hung out with me in these social media streets. My name is Crystal L. I am the founder and creator of All Hair Academy, which is a space and community for stylists who are looking to learn more about creating spaces where people feel like they belong. And today I'm going to be joined by one of my dear friends. I'm going to bring her on and then I will give her the amazing introduction that she deserves. So let me find her in here and invite her up. I think I did this right. I think I did this right. You know, I'm not, I'm not real, you know, this, this is new for me. So having people with me. All right. Hello, Lindsay. Hello. Hello. All Hi. Right. All right. So I am here with Lindsay Smith, who is the founder and creator of the independent beauty pro professionals. I always just like like slash it, but independent beauty professionals. It is a virtual home for independent beauty professionals looking to start and grow their business professionally. It is inclusive. It is supportive. To put it in a nutshell, it is the LinkedIn for beauty professionals. So thank you so much for joining me today. Lindsay, how are you? I am so good. I've got a glass of wine. I'm excited for this conversation. How are you? I am well. I am well. So Cheers. with Crystal, you should always have a cocktail. So today I am doing what I do. So I got some tequila and lemonade and it's called like Dolce or something. It's already mixed together. One of my dear friends and clients, Makaya, dropped it off for me like in 2021 and I've been like sipping on it. So what are you mm -hmm. drinking? I'm just, you know me, I've got my dry red. <laughs> got a cow. Right, well, cheers to cheers. you. And everybody joining us for Cocktails with Crystal. So I'm going to get a sip because it's hot in here. Mm -hmm. And it's about to get a little bit hotter. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so today we are going to dive into a real life Karen situation that both Lindsay and I were a part of during our retreat um, in Utah with our coach and the amazing women of high power. And, you know, it took me a second to think about how I was going to approach the situation. But, you know, I think the best way to approach it is full honesty, transparency, and here we are. Um, and I thought that it was so important to have Lindsay here with me because not only was she there um, during this experience, but she is also one of the founding members of the Beauty Collective, um, which is a program that I created last year for beauty professionals who are wanting to dive deeper into changing their hearts and minds around creating more inclusive spaces. So I think this was an opportunity for both of us to see like, um, DEI in action, and I don't think the universe could have done it any other way. So let's dive in. So Lindsay, and myself, and um, I think three other stylists, and Maisie, who is um, all the things for our high power group, and a resident of Utah, were shopping at a boutique, um, beautiful boutique, you know. And I was at the counter checking out, and this woman, <laughs> this Karen came up to me and was like, I think that, I think she started the conversation by saying, um, I'm super nosy, right? I think that was like herself giving her permission to be nosy as hell. And she was like, like, what's on your head? I'm pretty sure those were her exact words. Like what's on your head? And I was like, you know, it threw, threw me back, threw me back, you know? And I was like, oh, it's, it's a unit. It's a wig unit. Um, you take it on and off. Now, keep in mind, this woman has no idea that I'm a hairstylist. Like, no idea. Yeah. She just was like, what's on your head? So I see somebody. I'm just going to say whatever the hell I'm thinking and feeling and was like, you know, what's on your head? So, you know, I was like, oh, you know, everybody, you know, I, not a big deal for me. I was like, oh, it's a unit. It's a wig. I can take it on and off at night. And she's like, oh, OK. And then I think the next thing she proceeded to say was that I have a black daughter. And I mean, mm -hmm. that was like her immediate thing to go into. And I was like, 
oh, okay. So I'm black, your daughter black. I guess, you know, you've been waiting yep. for, you know, a black person to talk to. And she, <laughs> I'm like, I mean, I'm, there's not a lot of black people in Utah. I'm just saying. So yes, yes, that is actually very accurate. Yeah. You know, so she proceeds to be like, um, I have a black daughter and I've been taking her to um, Las Vegas to get her hair braided. Um, she gets box braids and crochet braids. Now, keep in mind, I still don't believe I had told this woman I was a hairstylist. I still don't nope. believe that we had had a conversation that I was a hairstylist. So I was like, oh, you know what? I'm actually a hairstylist. Um, and I specialize in doing all hair types and textures. She proceeded to say that she was also a hairstylist. Oh, yeah. So you have a black daughter and you're a hairstylist, right? So you have the background knowledge, you know, or should, or the resources to, you know, lo know a little bit more than you do. Yeah. So she proceeded to say, you know, my daughter does the box braids and crochets, and I'm really wanting her to, wanting to do something else with her hair. And yeah. I was like, you know what? I actually have an online platform where I educate stylists on how to like um, build more knowledge and confidence around doing multiple hair types and textures um, because hair really doesn't have a skin color. And um, so that would give you the opportunity to learn more and be able to empower your daughter to learn more. Now chime in small person standing next to her. Mm -hmm. Small person standing next to her then says, oh, no, 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 no. She doesn't want to do that. <laughs> she would rather pay somebody. Yep, that like, was the that was the kicker. Yep, that was the so, punchline. <laughs> I was like, "Oh, okay." So she's a hairstylist mm -hmm. who has adopted or somehow ended up with a black child, yep. and adopted. Know, adopted, adopted. We'll get into that part. Yep, yeah, we'll get there. Yep. <laughs> and she has zero desire to learn, even though I'm offering you this on a silver platter, and you have the skill set to be able to do this. Mm -hmm. And she goes, I think she then says, you know, it's just really hard to work with black hair. And I was like, well, hair doesn't have a skin color. And I was like, when you learned how to balayage, I bet it was hard too. So if something is hard, you practice at it and you get better, you know, mm -hmm. practice makes perfect. And I, and I think her daughter even chimed in and did say, yeah, mom, like if you do practice, you would get better mm -hmm. at it. Mm -hmm. uh, her face said that, that she was not at all interested in that. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the next part of the conversation went to, who are you? To the little girl. I was like, hey, who are you? And she was like, oh, I'm her daughter as well. And I'm trying to think, I don't, I don't want to say it inaccurately, but I was trying to think how the bridge went from her saying, this is my, not really my sister, yeah. because she's adopted. Yeah, That's pretty much what she said. So she was saying, like, this is my mom. The young lady is not really my sister because she's adopted. And I think she even went on to say, people say that I'm really mean when I say that. But, you know, that's just like the truth. She's she's really not, you know. And I was like, oh, OK, still at this point, calm, cool and collect. Um, I think she then proceeds to say, you know, yeah, her crochet braids, um, when you touch them, are really crunchy. Crunchy. and disgusting yeah disgusting. and yep. yep and then she said but she's really pretty because yep. you know that just made it all the better and she proceeded to pull the young lady up on her tiktok and in my mind i'm just hoping and praying that maybe this child is like three or four and we still have <laughs> some time nope she was 14 yeah. years old 14 so at 14, I could only imagine what it is like to live in a household with people who have the tools, right? Could learn the skill set, use such microaggressions about you to perfectly straight, perfect strangers, mm -hmm. what you could feel like as a person of color living in a town where no one looks like you, right? Yep. As I'm looking at the picture, I was like, oh, she's beautiful. The mom then chimes in and says, you know, she just really wants like white people hair. I mean, it is Utah. And I said, oh, you mean she wants straight hair? Yeah. Because hair doesn't have a skin color. There are white people who have curly hair and black people who have straight hair. So there's really not a, there's really not a like white people straight hair thing. And she kind of pretty well breezed over, over that topic altogether. 
And I think, I don't know how we transitioned into what I wanted to be called. Mm -hmm. um, but she said to me, um, I think what she was saying, like Utah really doesn't have a lot of, of, oh, Utah really doesn't have a lot of black people. Yeah. I mean, that's what you want to be called. Right. And then before yeah. I could even open my mouth, she said, well, that's what we call you here. Yeah. So basically didn't fucking yeah. matter. Oops. Yeah. What? <laughs> Take a drink. <laughs> F-bomb. Sorry. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No nope, matter what I wanted to be yeah. called um, during this. And, and through the whole thing, I, I pretty well stayed very calm. I don't think I yeah. ever raised my voice. I spent every single opportunity to educate her, to change the language, to flip the script, to, um, at the end... Uh, Maisie then said she was I was explaining kind of the program and Maisie like really kind of cut me off um, in an amazing way and then the way that she explained my program she was like no she has the best program in the nation this is what she does this is yeah. her job if and we were actually doing the great thing about independent beauty pro is they do pop-ups in different locations to allow collaborations and talks now remember this Karen was a hairstylist right so then the next thing is to say hey we would love an opportunity to continue this conversation not in the middle of this boutique in utah and give you some privacy and give you some tools and resources i'm absolutely 100 happy to do that here's my instagram here's the event we're going to be at would love 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 for an opportunity to talk to you y'all yep. think you came <laughs> no, no she did not not at all, come. Not no. at all. Um, and that was the most disheartening part. And mm -hmm. all things aside, that poor little girl, right? Yeah. That like, I can't even imagine what it's like to be in her shoes, um, to have someone who made the conscious decision to adopt a child and then made the decision to say, forget it. I am not at all going to learn anything about doing their hair. And when I could, right? I think mm -hmm. not to even give it an excuse if you were someone who wasn't a hairstylist, but you are, you yeah. have like a plethora yeah. of resources and you basically was like, sorry, not going to do, yeah. do it, not going to do it, you know? So, um, so Lindsay, you were there. What? what? Well, I mean, for me, the most shocking part was that she just had the balls, um, to, to just say and do whatever she wanted to say and do. Um, mm -hmm. And I know in the Beauty Collective, we talk mm -hmm. a lot about microaggressions. And for people who don't know what microaggressions, cool. they are, the term is a, a common place for verbal or nonverbal um, and environmental things that happen unintentionally or mm -hmm. intentionally that communi communicate mm -hmm. hostile or derogatory things and negative situations toward um stigmatize or culturally marginalized people. So people in hair salons saying, oh my God, your hair is so big, or can I touch your hair? Or what is that on your head? <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. that kind of shit. Yep. So um, after it happened, I was really like, hmm. I mean, I said a couple of things, but I, 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 was, I was telling you today, like I was almost like really traumatized um, mm -hmm. with brain fog because I just, I was just floored. Yeah. Um, so I think the two things right out of the gate that for me were so interesting, I, because I went through the beauty collective, I had hyper awareness of microaggressions. I will 100% full transparency have that exact situation happened six, eight months ago. I might not have been caught all the different things she said that were so offensive. And it was so, again, it was just eye opening to, to have went through such intense training around specifically like different microaggressions, but again, intentionally or unintentionally, I feel that she at various forms was, was being intentional and other times really she was not and had no awareness whatsoever of, of what she was saying. And it, that was just very eye opening to see like, oh my goodness, like left and right, just this and then this and then this and then this. And then her daughter, I think that was also really um, just so sad to see like, you know, this, this, she was maybe what, 16 to 18, somewhere in that range, like teenager. And the thing she was saying, I have an adopted sister. And so what she said about that, but in that context was, she's not really my sister, she's adopted. 
but people say that it's mean of me to say that. And that, I mean, that's terribly mean. <laughs> yeah. And people yeah, are right. I mean, People are right. And so again, I mean, I, I have an adopted sister and I would never introduce her as not really my sister, you know? And so again, being able to just recognize like the way that we speak as adults, our children, our, our friends' children, the children who are in our vicinity when we use words, they hear that, they internalize that and they make those words. And so like, that was really, again, just so I don't think to recognize, I mean, the, the mother, was basically instilling in her child all of these just cruel ways of communicating. And was watching that play out, it was just really eye-opening because it, it just, it's, that's, that's like so many, like the ripple effect, the ripple effect of how she acted in front of her child and had no problem acting that way. Like you said, public, so who knows how she speaks Otherwise, you know, I think about that. And that's how you're going to say something in the public. What are you saying to your adopted child when you're private and you're just together one on one? If you have no awareness for what you're saying publicly. I think that was really, like you said, so disheartening and, and like sad to see. But I think the second point that I wanted to make is that, like, not that I had any question that the impact of having a the past in the situation. This was not just a woman and her daughter. This was a hairstylist. And we were on the street. Again, investing in our own growth as professionals in the industry. And being able to see, like, oh, shit, what you're doing is not, like, kind of important. It's, like, like really important and this is why this was a real life like a like, child 16 year old adopted child who was growing up with a mother who had all the resources at her disposal to learn how to effectively communicate how to provide her with great services to empower her as a human to have whatever hairstyle she wants to have and not even just again it's kind of just out hair or beauty in general, it's about who she is in the world. Like, it was just such a, it, it was really truly just like the exact moment that something like that could have happened. And, and so much awareness to like, this is why we are all. Like, this is why you've created it, and this is why it's important. Like, it was like, actually, moment of like, oh, <laughs> this is a real human being who's out there like this, and that needs to really never happen again. And that, that, that's just not that shouldn't be a hairstylist. That should just never be a hairstylist. She shouldn't. She should, we should have hairstylists coming into getting licensed with more knowledge than she's had, and who knows how many years of experience she's been within the industry. So, yep. she wasn't a spring. She wasn't a spring chicken. No, nope. um, we walked out and we said she needs a lot of healing. She she really needs a lot of healing. <laughs> and again, I think. What I also like just want to communicate, like you and I, as we're talking about it, we talked about it earlier today and now we're talking about it here live. And I think it's easy to get fired up about it. Like it's easy to get like, oh my gosh. But honestly, the way you spoke in the moment was even kinder than you're speaking now. Like you were so collected. You were so like you floated above that situation in a way that was just so eye-opening and really just incredibly strong and powerful. Because I think, again, when we're confronted with disrespect and um, just really, again, I mean, there were moments of like racism that were happening, blatant racism. And, and again, when we're confronted with situations like that, it's easy to get angry. It's easy to get maybe um, more, more, discomforted and, and more like aggressive in our responses. But you you didn't do that. And when we can keep that cool, it's actually more received across the board. And so again, no matter what her takeaway from the conversation was, no matter what her daughter's takeaway from the conversation was, you impacted me, I can speak for myself. And so no matter what anybody else experienced in that moment, I was, 
I was impacted by seeing you be able to manage a conversation like that in such a graceful, strong, but also very secure, factual, no, this is, I mean, you corrected her in, a, in, a, in the most tactful way I've ever seen. So again, I think that is, that's that same ripple. So we can ripple in a positive way and we can ripple in a negative way. And, and each time we have interactions like that, we get to choose which way we wanna ripple. Um, I love that. I love what you said about choosing which way we want to ripple. And I know that when I finally, because it was not, it was not something that I knew that I wanted to do when I decided that I wanted to dive into education. It was actually something that I really, really fought because I was like, I don't want to be the black girl talking about like yeah. black hair. Mm -hmm. I was like, I want to be the successful stylist that I am talking about how you can make a business that's successful in whatever way you wanted it to be. Right. Yeah, yeah. And so whenever I talk, I always tell people like everything I talk about is from an inclusivity lens because that is who I am. Yeah. I talk about the success that I've had in, in my business. I talk about the systems and all of those things come up and are taught from an inclusivity lens because that's just who I am. Yeah. But then I knew that our industry really, really needed it to be spelled out and our industry really needed to understand that we are working in one of the most segregate, segregated spaces yeah. in the world and we touch so many people with our hands and if we could change our hearts and our minds the amount of ripples in yeah. a positive way we can have can really change and revolutionize the beauty industry and that is why the beauty collective was started yeah um one of the things I want to talk about is that this is something that impacts our children. Mm -hmm. This is something that we have the ability to impact and change generations from now. And it's interesting because people always say minorities and actually it's no longer minorities. No, really, They are actually no. the majority and they are minoritized people. Mm -hmm. And so we have to realize that the world is changed. Right. And yeah. Again, hair has no skin color. I know one of the stylists who was there said that she had a sister who was biracial. And one of the most amazing moments for her was when she opened up her salon that is diverse, yeah. that her sister with her curly hair and her niece with her curly hair were able to sit in the same space and get their hair done. Yeah. And she was able to accomplish that. And she lives in one of the most segregated cities in our entire country. So we can do this. Like we can do this one stylist at a time, one brand at a time, one esthetician at a time. Like we have all the tools and the resources in our, in our fingertips. We don't have to be the, the Karens of, of the world um, anymore. And I think this situation really showed me, especially because it was like, we're at a retreat, we're learning, we're growing. I was, I had just made the decision to, you know, step away from behind the chair for a sabbatical mm -hmm. um, to really focus on being able to spread this mission and do this work. And, you know, I didn't really have a lot of doubts, but babe, when this happened, that was like divine intervention telling me this is exactly what you're supposed to be doing. Um, I mean, I, I've experienced microaggressions before, but never on that level. So just mm -hmm. to have it in front of us, to be able to, you almost say share it with people who are doing what, who are learning and growing and personal development with our industry and them to see the importance of, of, um, you know, of this work and yeah. how we can be a part of that change. Um, so I, the question I got, I just got from Inst on Facebook is like, how do we start? How do we, dive into doing this work. And the first thing I always say that success starts with self. And I believe that the best way to look at what you've created is do it is through a self-assessment. Because when mm -hmm. you do that, there's nobody but you, yourself, and your ego, right? Yeah. And when you find the results, if you've created a space that's not as inclusive as you wanted it to be, because of something that I talk about all the time, which is implicit bias and similarity bias, which we dive deep into those things in the Beauty Collective. I give you some tips and resources on how to change that. So if you're wanting to know what you can do today or diving deeper and wondering like, have I created a brand that's not inclusive? Have, have I created a space where people don't feel like they're welcome? Um, there is a link in my bio for a free self-assessment. You can go into the bio, into my bio, click the free self-assessment. 
you'll be able to take the test, you'll get a score, and then you'll have the opportunity to have some resources at your fingertips today for yeah. you to start um, thinking differently. So yeah. we are at our 20, past our 20 minute mark. I like to keep it at 20 minutes. Um, I, where can people find you, Lindsay? I love everything about IBP. Um, it has been such an amazing resource for me. Where can people hang out with you in these social media streets? Yeah, so on our platform on Instagram, that's the quickest, fastest way to connect with not just me um, as the founder, but also our community members. So the biggest thing I can say is that we we are incredibly focused on pointing back to the many, many talented educators, coaches, artists that are part of our community who are doing massive things for our industry like you are crystal so again within our community you can find access to so much education not from me i'm actually not a coach on our platform but actually from our community members like you um and then also like you mentioned we're doing we're hosting in-person events again which is so wonderful we have an event next week in denver we have one in baltimore woohoo on the fourth um, you and I have talked about hosting something later this year. We'll be in Detroit in May. We've got a ton of stuff. So um, in-person meetup events. We also have virtual education hours. We host once a month. Um, all the links are in our bio. So go over to Instagram, check it out. You can find more info and then also send a DM if you have any questions for sure. Awesome. Thank you for all the details and hanging out with me for the second episode of Cocktails with Crystal. Um, what it's like to have a real life Karen. I will be back um, next week, same time, same place with a whole new topic and a whole new full drink. So cheers to you, Lindsay, cheers. and cheers to everybody who hung out with cheers. us today. Remember, every day is a new opportunity to slay peace and love. Bye. Take care. Bye.